Hey guys. Hey, we're live. Oh. We're oh. on air. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey. Turn, oh. Change, change your radio station. Oh. Start, start uh. listening to me, please. Oh, we come on. I need some K love in my life. We have to talk. I just need love. Uh, you just, we, I don't know what the K love is. All right, we're not going to go there either. Um, uh, that's Christian radio, bro. Yes, I know, and I just made it dirty, didn't I? <laughs> hey, this this is after the bell <laughs> from Arbitrage Trade. I'm Darren, and uh, after after the market on Wednesdays, when it officially closes, we talk about what happened that previous week. We'll talk about that official closing thing later, Royce. Um, and <laughs> this is after the bell. Well, what, what's going to what's going to happen when markets go twenty four seven? Right, hey, Royce. We'll have to say it exactly three o'clock. Royce, Central Time. Uh, Royce, who is this dude talking? Um, I think that's um a Josh clone. Josh clone. <laughs> I don't look anything like Josh. <laughs> we had. I didn't say it was a good clone. <laughs> did we? Did we make the bank we better happy? Clone. Wait, I don't know what. <laughs> it's the a bank said they've had enough of this show and they're not going to sponsor it anymore. So this AP is Morgan is no longer Eastern here. Eastern version of Josh Morgan. No, we. You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we switched in out. China. <laughs> we. <laughs> made made in Singapore. <laughs> right. made, made in singapore and very expensive yes and that's why he's yawning people because he just woke up it's really early there <laughs> and guess what oh, it's thursday not wrong so it's thursday after the bell for him <laughs> it is indeed thursday morning yeah <laughs> that's right but he cannot go to the future and predict you, you want you want to know what the uh, stock market's going to do today exactly that's where i was going with it <laughs> free market so We've yeah. traded out J.P. Morgan for Goldman Sachs. Ugh, doesn't get any better. All right, so we're going to move on <laughs> after the introductions are over. I, of course, am Darren, and I'm in the basement of my parents' home, and uh, they gave me some nice lights, and uh, God bless their souls. So let's talk about the tail of the tape, and uh, some of these things are going to be what we talked about last week uh, when J.P. Morgan was here. Um, so we're going to talk about it now from Goldman Sachs' perspective. Um the market continues on except for today. So <laughs> what uh give me give me your spiel there, Mr. Goldman Sachs. You said the SP had risen and stuff. Give, give me your stats. Yeah, so it's risen 23 of the last 30 weeks, which you know Impressive. only down weeks is a pretty solid run, which we've talked about before in some of our blog posts that is kind of anticipated when it comes to being an election year right? Markets typically do pretty well. We've had a last good couple of years. So not too big of a surprise that it has continued to rip. Now, I would say the biggest surprise in my opinion is that the NASDAQ has continued to hit all-time highs, even with rates being at 5%. But it's also being carried, carried by one 60-year-old man who likes to wear black leather jackets. And that's Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, He's which we'll talk there. about more a little later. He he is out there. Yeah. I'm glad he finally has his day in the sun, but he is now runs the company that would be the 11th, 11th largest GDP in the world. And all they do is make chips. Hey, everyone that's needs it. chips. I just... This, uh, this makes sense. AI. We are going to talk... We're going to talk about NVIDIA and AI a little bit later. Yes. I can't and, wait and for the rise of Ultron. <laughs> we'll <laughs> dig into that. <laughs> I heard that Disney ride is really good. All right. So, so now we maybe, go to... maybe that's the AI that uh, Elon's making. Ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's move on to uh, you're probably right, by the way. Uh, I really watched let's that go last on night. to, to <laughs> T plus one, which uh, Daniel and I just talked about uh, pretty extensively on our uh, what's going to release on Friday, which is Deep Dive with Daniel. And uh, basically, we talked about this last week, too, didn't we? A little bit, Royce, I think. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so, but then it happened. So yep, now we're talking now. about, yeah, now we're talking about now that it's here, what do we think? So first up, oh, by the way, you know what? UK has had a six-day negative streak just on the other way around. Sorry, I just backed up a second. Now we'll go back forward. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what do you guys, I mean, where are we going to go from here? Is there anything going to change? Is it all going to stay the same? 
Uh, I know we talked about fees and stuff, so we've already talked about that, Royce, but about them making more fees. But oh what, yeah, uh, fee here. That, that yeah, what better. anything else going to change? I mean, I'm curious about. Uh, they already have enough problems with FTDs. So it's, is is there going to be? Or, which, if you don't know what that is, failed to delivers. Is that going to change at all, or is it going to get worse or better? Uh, what I'm hearing is it'll get better. Is supposed to be the narrative. I don't know. In what do you theory, think? Boys? It is supposed to make markets more efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. But hey, look at it this way: all of the money lenders are salivating because guess what? That means they get to use margin every single day of the week. They're like, "Oh yeah, it's settled. Even if it's not settled, use margin. You get back out there. Go on. Go. Go for it." Use all that money. Borrow it. Let's let's make some money off of you making money or trying to make money. So you said so, uh, Gensler had a quote, right? Uh, yep. Daniel. What, it will make our market plumbing more resilient, timely, and orderly. <laughs> 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 Those are not yeah. sarcastic laughs. Yes, they are. It's um, sort of like plumbing a network line, right? You know what that does. <laughs> or if you don't, basically that's a, a, a reset. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you said salivating. By the way, this this is a, a short week. So uh, let's try to make the podcast a little bit shorter. We won't dig too far into that. We'll just go ahead and move on to what you guys want to talk about anyway, which is NVIDIA. It went over, uh, I think it hit 11.50. No, never mind. Let's back up. Let's back up. Let's say you, you, I'm, you, I'm, jump, you jumped over. I don't want to jump my, over a foreign my favorite, exchange. My favorite maybe there's topic. There's a reason. There's a reason maybe there that I would try to jump over Ethereum and it's ETF. So let's go back to the Ethereum ETF. All right. Speak while you want to speak, Mr. Goldman Sachs, about Ethereum ETF. And then we'll let Royce talk about it. They did it. For all the Bitcoin <laughs> Apple heads, Darren, they approved <laughs> the Ethereum ETF. Now that is you're embracing the name. Dangerous. Now, now well, I so so I think there's a few interesting things here. Is that one Bitcoin for a while was viewed as the only thing that was like not a security. And so I think them approving this is kind of like the you know, SEC going like, all right, like we can't afford to lose another lawsuit from Grayscale or Coinbase. And this is the like next biggest one that could be argued as not a security, right? Now, let's be clear. I don't think pretty much any other crypto could be justified as not a security because they, like, if you look at like Solana or like Cardona, it's like 60 plus percent of the float of the coin is owned by the company because they're the ones staking it to make the network work, right? So this is, in my opinion, probably the last one. You see, Royce, I see your head. I'll let you talk in a minute because I feel like I could be wrong. That might might, might be old data. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm not questioning your data. I'm just basically, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take my turn when I have my turn. <laughs> okay. uh, Daniel, you're, Daniel's still on the clock. Yeah, the gentleman right. from Singapore. The gentleman from Singapore is still last time. There before I come it's like it's it, it's like um it's like chess. Like I have my time allotted. It's Congress. You know? It's Congress. I'm, you got I'm ready. You got three I'm minutes ready. of your time. <laughs> um, but but so so I do think this is the last um crypto ETF that is approved at least for a while. Um, and I I think it is kind of interesting timing because the current administration that's in um doesn't like a particular candidate that is all of a sudden after five years of being anti-crypto quite pro-crypto which i just find a little interesting um and, and i think one of the what 22 is when he started 2022 is when he started uh he made that turn i think oh is it okay i saw a tweet in 2019 that um when that candidate was still on that platform um <laughs> you know, he uh, yeah. he was anti-crypto. But I, I think one of the interesting right. things, you know, other than the the U.S. kind of, you know, um, approving these. So, you know, they'll, they'll trade within the next, you know, month or two um, is that Hong Kong was actually looking at approving a staking ETF, which is a whole thing that at least for the SEC, a lot of the crypto exchanges have been getting in trouble for. Um, and, you know, daring to throw in some nice conspiracy theory stuff for you is that staking will never be approved in the U.S., at least in the immediate term, because BlackRock wants to hold 
all of your Ethereum and they want to stake it for no. themselves. And I don't no. know if you know what yields are right now for a certain oh, yeah. farming, but it's like 16 plus percent, depending on where you go. 16 is a conservative number, depending on how risky you want to be. It's going down, right? It's going to continue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, of course. It's, yeah. So then you got to make your money until, until you find your next uh, a place to yield farm. You know? So we yeah. better hurry and make an ETF since we can't make it on farming anymore. <laughs> so that means they're, they're all going to ship everything to Hong Kong to do all the other coins, right? Well, no, be, be, be well, I, I, I doubt, I don't think anybody are. will, um, approve anything we don't. Honestly, I hope, I hope this is us becoming a leader in crypto again, but we'll, we'll see, you know, we're good at shooting ourselves in the foot. All right. Well, Royce, thank you, I, I want to hear Royce's takes. Right. Thank you. Bitcoin Applehead. We give the floor to <laughs> Mr. Royce Wells. <laughs> Go well, ahead. Being that I love commodities. I'm still trying to figure out how do you turn a currency, which is always a commodity, into a security. That's so. So from my point of view, all right. Let's let's take it. Let's take it all the way back to okay, Great Britain, the British pound. Why is that not a security? It's all of Britain's money. They basically the good faith of Great Britain is what's backing that money, right? So why is that not a security? Because they own 60, 70, 80 percent of it. They're the ones who printing it. Why, why, why are they picking on cryptocurrency trying to make it a security when it's clearly just a currency? Because governments don't want to lose control. <laughs> and governments aren't a business that make money, right? They're all they're all loss leaders. <laughs> I agree with both of you, by the way, in that. I'm just like, wait a minute. <laughs> Like and, and and as far as basically okay, who who else would they try to pull into the space? I don't I think Cardano might be a good candidate, but I don't think it would be the best candidate. Honestly, I would think if they could, if they had their their druthers, XRP. Because basically, uh, I thought you were gonna say Doge. No, no, no. Or so, or with dog with hat. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Although it does have like, even though Doge is a meme coin, it's initial um offering when it came into being was not to be a meme coin it was to handle all online transactions so basically instead of having like an apple pay or an amazon whatever they were trying to basically set up an ecosystem with doge to handle and basically you'd switch with with all of the different e-news and basically um basically make it it's all based off the same currency and the, the base currency would be Doge to get basically anything anywhere across the internet. And then they made it a meme coin, right? So there are all these versions of Doge, the Doge Elons, this. And I even saw there's a new TES, TES coin that's coming out. They're trying to say it belongs to Tesla or Elon. I, I, garbage, absolute garbage. <laughs> but let, let's get back to... Uh, XRP. I think XRP would be a very good one to become an, ER, uh, an ETF just because it should speed up the transaction and settling of most of the cryptocurrencies on the ledger. That's literally its entire um, purpose. XRP was designed to basically, instead of having to wait 10 to 15 minutes for all the ledgers to agree, they have a very fast and very efficient way of doing it that does it and second to even sub-second, even across what basically faster than a wire, right? Faster than a SWIFT can transfer fiat currency, XRP can transfer and um, confirm, decentralize the cryptocurrency ledgers. So if anyone, I think XRP might be the next one if they did do another ETF with cryptocurrency trying to make it conform and be a security. Royce, did they get, because the XRP was the one that got like locked on Coinbase, right? Because they were going through that lawsuit that said they were a security and they didn't yep. do a proper yes, IPO, right? It, but they got unlocked. If they you got will, unlocked right? if you because they're like, again. no, it's not. But that, that, that still wouldn't stop the SEC from saying, you know what? Let's put some value around that. Let's make a fund behind that electronic traded fund. We're going to make a fund that basically backs that guy. Now that ETF is a security, but 
the overall underlying uh, cryptocurrency is still a commodity. Well, right? with my hat on. Uh-oh, what we got? I'm just saying, Gary Gensler, when he came into uh, the SEC position, I think he was sent in there specifically to make these two things happen. And that would be uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin uh, ETFs. He, you really he was, think he that? Was, he was in the crypto arena before he came in, and he's just following through on what he and whoever else handles him wants him to be. But didn't he always? I like, don't have my hat on it. <laughs> exactly, that's what they do. They they start off saying, "Man, I hate it," just like Larry. Are you saying like J Jamie Dimon does that? Yes, they all say this is terrible. I hate it, man. Don't buy this stuff. Price goes down, and then we're again. We're hey, we're gonna play now. So, oh, this I mean, is the best thing to buy this year. Fire eye, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. So right. anyway, I think they they play the they they play good cop bad cop, but within the same body. They don't, it doesn't take two people. They just do it themselves. I mean, they do course, it every like, hey. every quarter now in the stock market. So anyway, we're gonna quarter, we are gonna move on. Days. What's that? <laughs> every twenty three days. Oh, by the way, that I think it's also <laughs> yes. very important. Or maybe coincidental. I won't correlate. Okay. I think it's very coincidental that we have a 23-day market run. That's one of the Fibonacci numbers. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> so just Typically everything's run by machines, right? Far, why why you have, have to ruin the next week? Everything's <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> this next week coming up, man, I'm telling you. Who knows what we're going to walk into Wednesday after the bell next week? But wait, 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 what, 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 what are we going to walk walk into? I want to know. I don't. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we're tickle gonna talk tickle my fancy. Yeah. Okay. Hey, well, did you did you, you not got, pay attention to the title of last week's seminar, the uh, Sunday seminar? Feel the burn. <laughs> 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 basically talking about um, basically first half of the year. By the way, is over. Yeah. So this, I'm going to actually segue a little bit. From that, let's talk about a little bit about uh, Forex, right? So the Swiss franc basically has been moving opposite of the dollar and actually um, gaining um, some momentum behind it. It's actually been appreciating over the last few years and been competing head to head with the dollar. And basically that, that title, Phil the Burn, was actually talking about Burn Tower, which sits in Switzerland, right? So double, punny. Etc. Et on top of the fact that I'm expecting a correction to be following this as basically the dollar gets stronger, possibly the Swiss franc gets even stronger, and Japan also gets stronger. So we got a lot of stuff going on in the Forex market right now. Basically, they're sitting at the very bottom of my bands, and I can't wait to see what the news is going to have to say that's going to make them suddenly go into a rally. Okay, so yes, you got that. You got the T1 that just started, so it'll be the uh, you'll get your cycle. Uh, I mean, then we're in a have, global rally. We're in a global yeah. rally, and, and you have more of the basil too that's going to actually start. The well, moon, they've already baby. prepared for it. They've already prepared for it. They say, but a lot of them said they weren't prepared for it, and they tried to stop it. So there's a reason why. There's got to be a reason why they did not want this to happen. Uh, again, it could be just the whole good cop bad cop thing and they love Slight it so of hand <laughs> that's right <laughs> but it, there for a while now it's always been even us tinfoil hat guys have said january or june is going to be tough and we'll see we'll see what happens it, it's uh it's middle of the summer when they love to blow things up so when everybody's on vacation so we'll see we'll burn. see what happens it, the burn. it could be the first week <laughs> it could be the second week but i'm telling you junes i have a feeling something's going to happen but uh, you know how we are, us apes. We don't we don't bring any facts, right? <laughs> no, we're not financial advisors. Well, and we are two, not financial two advisors. Two thirds of us Thank are not financial you. advisors. That, that other guy, yet. we don't talk about him. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! He to is be, not. Oh, he's to taking be clear, tests. he's taking tests. My my, my licenses are not active. Therefore, Thank you. I'm not a financial advisor. Okay, don't come after him, Gary. <laughs> That is a Just very to important be clear. distinction because he doesn't want to give a mom after him, Gary. That <laughs> is. Is. Or lose his license. That's they're they're only accurate. well, no, no. I mean, they they ex, they expire at the end of the year if I don't get sponsored by a bank. So then I will officially definitely be not. But I thought okay. I thought Goldman didn't even hire licensed. It was just you know somebody off the street. That's all they did there. Yeah, and then then they make you get your license. <laughs> <laughs> 
true. I got a license. <laughs> they got to mold right. you how they want you. License I have a build. licensed. I have a license to move this show on. So we've got. Uh, in, <laughs> we were getting to Nvidia anyway. We just kind of went this way around to it. Partially my fault. But let's talk about Nvidia. So they went over eleven, almost eleven. Are they hit eleven fifty today? I think mm -hmm. they did. Yeah. And they then did. there's an analyst that came out, uh, which you know, come on. The analyst says they're going to hit 1,400. Um, oh, they, they moved it up another 100. It was 1,300 yeah, just this, yesterday. Right. Cantor. But that's what they're doing. That's part of the game, right? You keep moving it up so people keep coming in. Um, and mm. but thus making their investments more valuable. But yeah. um, it is June 6, right? June 6 is the actual uh, at close. Uh, they will do the split or overnight. June 7. Um, right. So overnight of six it, it so june 7th when it first becomes uh, okay the split is is actually it's, a, it's officially in place yes correct correct down to 100 and we'll decide that maybe that's the one we picked this week i told you 57 watch he's that, he's not that. here he's not it, we have daniel now he's going to jump in so he won't wait i'm giving away who won anyway sorry <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm confused what i'm supposed to be doing right now <laughs> good good nothing right now nothing I, 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 it's squirrels i just got squirrels um but the big thing that really happened which people missed is that for every share you get nine additional shares and i believe yes. that is what's pumping this market up right now at, at nvidia that's that's what it's about so that um they get those nine additional shares right is that what's doing well, yeah when, when when you when you do this split actually after it's split is often when it pops like when when tesla did it right i bet i'm like they did it twice or something yep. every time they did it the stock like doubled right yep. and it, um you know the the theory is is that retail starts moving in so it moves the price and then obviously actual institute i know i see i knew you're gonna do that darren actual institutional money starts rolling in but it just creates the effect that like oh it's a cheap stock you yeah. know we know it's only 110 it's, now Woo. it's not yeah it's not it's not how that works <laughs> let me use my millions as a retail investor to move this stock <laughs> you don't Let's have a million go. dollars in your robin hood account yeah sure i do uh-huh <laughs> I've got I actually wonder underwear. how that T plus one is going to actually impact uh, people who have enough money in their accounts to move the market. Right, right. Um, because I know that basically, I think, I, I want to say it's over, if you make over a million dollars worth of transaction in a single week, you have to register because you could technically move the market hmm. on any one particular one. equity. Hmm. So... When it's settling instantly, will they adjust that rule? Because if you got your money back, like say, for example, I'm working with 100K, but I make 10 trades in a five-day window, it looks like I'm controlling a million dollars. Hmm. They will adjust the regulation quickly. They won't have a, a public time where people well, can it's, comment on it in this case. They, they, they don't they don't view like they don't view that kind of stuff as like closed money, right? It's like notional moved. Right. So like, I don't, I don't think that really would change how they view it, would it? Well, I know I, and this is, uh, this is 2016 Royce versus, you know, 2024 Royce. I had an E-Trade account and I had uh, one of my uh, IRAs rolled over into it. And they're like, what are you doing? You have to register. I'm like, why do I have to register? They're like you move this. I'm like, I just bought two things. So like, yeah, but you're buying of those two things. You sold out of Apple and you bought into XYZ that was a million dollars worth of movement yeah you're no longer a novice you're a professional if you basically you were like they're gonna they're gonna be watching the account to make sure that i don't do that otherwise i would have to register as a credit investor hmm. interesting so i was like right. what why okay no to self don't trade as much in this account <laughs> <laughs> well, this this some analyst said by 2030, is it that uh, NVIDIA is going to be that's what we're talking about. It's going to be worth 10 trillion. I mean, they're really putting all the numbers out there way out there. I mean, oh, yeah. just numbers that don't make hey, sense. But. They got hype trains like where's the music? You know, I'm just I'm just. <laughs>
Like the Vegas folks they send out for the clubs. Yeah, man. <laughs> and uh, Arsenio Hall out there. Who, who, yeah. uh, you know, all that. All that. Out right there <laughs> slapping it. Hey, come to the club. Cash money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to AI. Uh, AI, AI. Sound like Nelly. Um, <laughs> so Elon Musk, open AI. Elon Musk raises $6 billion for XAI. And that was another good reason for everybody to start pumping everything again. Um, what that it they put a direct relationship there between open AI and XAI, and that's mm-hmm. what led to NVIDIA also pumping way up, too. Right? I mean, it was just like any and everything that has to do with once again. I mean, how many times can you keep saying XI or AI and get away with this pump? I mean, picks and what? shovels, I, baby. I don't get it, huh? Picks and shovels, picks and shovels. <laughs> Jeez. Automation. Automation is taking over. Other words Everyone for knows that. automation is going to be big anyway, right? And now basically you have a tool that's making it even easier, basically breaking down barriers for people who wouldn't otherwise have access. You have people writing websites with ChatGPT now, literally saying, hey, I want a website that does XYZ. Give me the front page. Give me the about page. Give me the whatever. Write it in Bootstrap 5. And it goes, okay, here you go. What do you want on it? Put your picture here, here, here. Done. But it's already, quote, worked into the price. And then they're going to, quote, work it again to the price the next six months. And then work it again into the price. six. I mean, come on. How many times can you just... Well, think about the computer, right? When the computer first caught on, they're like, Tandy. All right, great. Tandy. Whoa. And then Microsoft. And then basically everyone bandwagon. And it's like, oh, this is actually pretty good. This, This does a lot for us. This propels us even further. Or... Like late 80s, late 80s, everyone had a, a home phone. You get a cell phone now, basically you're carrying a phone with you. What happened to the house phones? What happened to the South Central Bell? What happened to the Bell, right? All these yeah. things, basically, as technology marches forward, the early adopters make out like bandits. The people who are to say, oh, I can't keep going. They can't keep going. It can't keep going. They get left behind. And then you go like, oh, that, that was Amazon. Oh, that was AutoZone. Oh, that was you know, Apple. <laughs> you know what they Maybe. say, if you ain't first, you're last. Yeah, and basically, hey, yeah, I would but, rather but be a me too than basically a uh, see you guys. <laughs> it's just, what's what's annoying here, though, is you, is you know that when they all get together in Davos, wherever it is they get together and talk about what the <laughs> next year is going to be, right? This is what we're going to plan out. The next four, this quarter, we'll say AI will do this. We'll, don't tell them the second quarter yet. And then the second quarter, we'll say AI does this. And then they, even though they already knew it the first quarter, let's just, because we could take advantage of what the Fed has given us to invest back into ourselves for all the wealthy people at the top. And then, and then we'll just slow release it through each quarter and pump, pump, pump. So- and so, that will justify. So what, what year did the Avengers Avengers come out? Wow, right? that's a different. Okay, yes. Right? And the reason I'm saying this is like in the movie they said that AI would be taking over the world, trying to literally end the world. Well, and yeah, well, no, no. AI has been later, around for the, like, since the '70s, I think. Go ahead. For no, no, not not the Avengers, like the seven, and like the movie, the newest movie with you know Ryan sure, Downey sure. Jr. and all those guys, Rise of Ultron, right? It's like okay, they this computer becomes artificially intelligent and then tries to end the world, and the next thing you know, you know, four years later, we're like, oh, everyone has AI on their desktops and on their phones and on their watches. I don't know. I see. I see. Maybe not causation, but definitely correlation. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I don't see why we were still talking about Alan Iverson. Uh, he yeah. had his day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he never practice. even won a championship. He never even won a practice. championship. <laughs> Playoffs. Game about practice, not the game out. Playoff. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna move. This is not ESPN. We'll move right along. Uh, so we're gonna talk about rate cuts. Better late than never. Well, is that true? I mean, maybe they're never going to come the way it's going. Yeah. And this is another thing they've been doing for a couple of years now. Why do you need is- break that? higher for longer forever? <laughs> it's that's, but what I mean, th- this is another thing they're doing to pump the markets. It's like 
Okay, they started this BS about a year and a half ago, right? Wait, this Saying is now. no them having high rates is not them pumping the market. No, I get, get what I'm getting. Well, that the does, narrative though, does pump they're always the a little bit because inflation makes the numbers look like they're more when they're actually worth less because you're having to put more dollars out there. The value of the currency underneath is actually worth less, which is why you have to put more out there. And everyone's like, "Oh, it's still green." The price may have helped. Just the same reason why a thirty thousand dollar house. Is now $150,000 house, is now $350,000 house. Nothing has changed in the materials. Nothing. Your dollar just spends less. And so you need more to buy the same materials. Yeah, that's yeah. not like a good pump. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the pumping of the markets by what they keep saying now. And they go through this rigmarole every FOMC meeting, blah, 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 is after they get done, they say, okay, well, that means we're closer to the rate cuts. And they started that crap a year and a half ago. We're closer. And then, oops, it didn't happen. Oh, well, we're closer, though. Oops, it didn't happen. But, hey, we're closer to those cuts. And every single time after that, they would go pump, 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 pump. So, I mean, it's just a game. It's a it's a narrative game. But remember, like I said in previous. And I'm tired of it. Bells, right? And, like, in previous after the bells, that's how they control the, the cash flow, right? Basically, yes. if if the rates are when you cut rates, you basically are giving some relief. You're giving people like your money will buy more with this. Those rate cuts, it's like I can afford more house because the rates are lower. Like you look at basically about a year and a half ago, right? When housing was sitting at two to three percent, anyone could afford a three hundred thousand dollar house because the note was like okay. You wind up paying over a 30 year period about 450, 500K. You now take that and with a five, six, seven, eight percent uh, rate now, you're looking at almost 1.2 million for the same exact house. So mm -hmm. those rate cuts, they won't cut it unless they absolutely have to. Oh, right? I know. That means, I know. But that also signals smart money that basically your money is safer in banks, is which where they want it anyway. So that way the banks can make more money. Correct. And and the wealthy will always, always, always benefit from higher interest rates because the companies can raise prices and they go all the way to the breaking point. Uh, and then like McDonald's has learned, <laughs> and then you have to start coming back down on your prices. But I mean, all those in between, like when everybody's saying that the, that the market's going to go down, well, no, it's not. And that's what this game's all about is because the, the, the every single ER is better because people are paying more for the same thing and yeah, it's, it's pumping up the corporate profits. And that's, that's a big battle right now. It's between corporate and just your average American, not elite, because there was a study I saw that everybody over a hundred K right now actually sees it as a good consumer they there was a good consumer survey result for people that were 100k and over but everyone under that mm -hmm. is what's bringing everything down so it, it's 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 widening this wealth gap it's creating yeah. a big divide and corporate is getting richer as the interest rates go up <laughs> they're the ones that have the, the big deep deep accounts that they're getting the four and a half percent and above percent yeah. on just their savings yeah, so but that's it's, just it. If you can have a risk-free investment, why not? That's literally saying don't plan the stock market where there could be drawdown. Put it over here, and you're guaranteed a return. Like a 60-40 rule or 40-60 rule. What's that rule that they have that uh, you 80, put? 20? 80 20 well, No, that's the different rule. <laughs> that's a rule of life. 90-10, um, uh, people wealth. Never mind. Um, Nine. no, I'm talking about your investments though. Mr. Goldman Sachs is the, is the, investment. Oh, like a 60, 40 portfolio. Thank you. Yes. That is, is 60 is stock, like 40 bonds. Thank you. There you go. Uh, See, you filled in the blanks for me. Thank you. <laughs> but the fix versus stocks that do this, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's the idea is you have, you have a, a, a good chunk of your investments that are going to just be good and steady. And then the rest is where you start play, you play with up and down. So. All right. Well, we've, I think we've covered that enough. Let me see. I don't remember what it was that you were bringing in for the charts. F but it's, it's time. And uh, we had a little theme going here with uh, FedEx. And then we did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Royce and decided to just on continue on with FIX. I'm going to fix you.
which is right. what? Break it down. That's Comfort Systems USA. All right. Comfort Systems USA. I'm waiting for my charts to draw. We got no drawing going on here. Uh, let me see. I'm going to reload and hopefully it reloads. Hey. All right. Yay. And we're going to go back in here and see if we can get some, some, some things showing. All right. There's a band. All right. So first off, this guy's out here in the stratosphere. This is on the 15 minute chart. So I mean, basically it's been on a tear, literally on a tear crossed over the line uh, somewhere um, May 2nd. So all this month, all this guy has been doing is winning. Literally from, this is NVIDIA. Of course it is. Give me one second. Let me find that. But FIX, because I reloaded my screen, it took away my chart. Um, and we know that NVIDIA was winning anyway. So, all right, let's go back. Let's go back. This is where I was looking for. All right. So FIX, it's been on a tear as well. So literally since that rally that started in uh, November, right? So November 1st, everyone thought we were going down, going down, and going down forever. It sold off hard. S&P sold off. But then basically November 1st, it came out swinging. Reason being, mostly, is basically it was sitting on heavy uh, support and resistance across almost every single ETF and every single um, stock I can find, right? So where are we now? We basically broke over that line. This guy was sitting at 169. He had a little bit of turbulence roughly at about 196, got all the way to where our system says, okay, you're out of room. And he's like, hold my beer. I am nowhere near out of room. We can still go. And basically what allowed this guy to go even further was that he was not, this red line was not sitting in our upper danger zone. Typically you will not get a correction until the red line basically gets into the dark blue area on this uh, infinity band. So this is like uh Pretty much, and this is large scale, so this is 15 minutes. This guy is good for about a month and a half, a two-month ride. Um, but this guy had more than enough steam to make it months, like literally almost the entire rally um, since November, almost a seven- to eight-month run. But now it's running out of steam, and basically in order for the buy trend to continue, we have to go back down and see somewhere around 336 to 332. And if you look at our dashboard, we also notice that it has support high in the 320s. So basically, if you're looking at this and you're trying to find a spot to buy FIX uh, between 323, might be a good place to find support on it. Looking at um, just the RSI line on this 15 minute chart, it looks like about 319.78. So if if this is something that you're interested in, at least wait for the dip, and then hopefully you'll be able to make some money. So that's all I got for you guys today, and thank you again. All right. Thank you, Royce. And, and uh, that Comfort Systems, uh, they deal with industrial services, right? I believe. I think that's what they specialize in. Hey. Whatever they do, we'll fix it. That's true. You just know or the chart. That'll <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> That'll fix them. <laughs> like all right. Do Speaking... this, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Speaking of a fix, fix that was in, fix that happened. Uh, our guest, we're moving on to the uh, to the wager, which was FCX, which is Freeport Mac. Oh, yeah. Let's go take a look at FCX. Yeah. Ooh, oh, after okay. the bell, See, here's where Royce tries to get his back. 275. Yeah, so Josh okay. wins. <laughs> Josh is the winner. Our guest, who's not represented today, we have uh, Daniel back. Thank you. He just um, did a mic drop and left, is what I that's heard. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go out with a, a two week win. Hey, he's like, I'm <laughs> don't go too far. We might need you back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his winning percentage uh, is well, you two might be pretty close on your winning percentage. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he just surpassed us, Daniel. It is now. He has two wins. Both of you guys well, are one and one. I was going to say, that's not hard. I only won once. <laughs> it, exactly. It is five. But now he's up two. Now he's up two. So it is five to two to one to one. So it go. is. Our five. three for the apes. I was getting one there. for the institutional <laughs> guy. <laughs> five for the algos. Quan heads are five. <laughs> Bitcoin apple heads. I mean, institutes are one. 
and the apes, uh, which is not fair because there's been two of us. But uh, hey, we can get more guest stars three. in here. I guess uh, speakers. We'll need another institute guy. I don't know if I can bear it though. We'd have to have another institute guy. <laughs> it's not rigged at all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Anything you guys want to close with before we get out of here on this short and short? So we're not week? no no bets. No bets. We do need a bet. We do need a bet. You're right. I was trying to get out of here before that because I haven't done so well. What was it? Week one, I won, and I haven't won since. Uh, um, I think I won week <laughs> one, and you won week two. Oh, okay. That's much better. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, he's not here to pick a new uh, new stock. So I mean, do we want to do the whole Nvidia thing again? See where it goes. I mean, that's such a crap shoot right now. Where it's gonna I don't want to do that one. That one just feels yeah. like a losing battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How Which far down you want to do it then? Which one you want to do? You let Daniel pick. Let... You got a split happening too, so that, that would be kind of weird. So what yeah, let Daniel uh, let go. The new guy, you got one oh, in yeah. mind there, Daniel. Uh I just found one, but it moves so much after market. I don't really okay. I mean, I can look it up on the chart and see what we find. You can do there Palantir. You there's DraftKings. Oh, there's a good millennial. And I know uh, Josh Palantir. did say he wanted to look at uh, BA because of the memes. Yeah. Boeing, I think. Okay. I guess it should be an ape. It should be an ape stock, shouldn't it? Heck, maybe we should do AMC then. I mean, yeah. be- whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Let's not talk about Bruno. Speaking of fix, <laughs> uh, no, no, uh, no, I'm uh, um, doing the wager on our own book, Darren. RGME. <laughs> no, no, no talk in your book when it comes. To I don't, bets. I don't own GME though. So, <laughs> all right, we can, do, we, we can do this. We can make this work. I guess since an, that'd be a good way to do it. Actually, each week is uh, since the apes won in quotes. Oh, they definitely won. Stock. All right, so <laughs> GME, let the oh boy, let, the, let there be light. <laughs> Ooh, what kind of channel is it going to stay in? Probably is the question. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> and from here, because it just looks pops like and back down. Woo, this guy yeah, is be a all wide over. Channel. Yes, all right. yes. All right, let me. It's my okay. I'm gonna have to reload my screen because it's not. I don't like what it's looking like. Give me one second. I guess I could pull it up while you're looking at it. Just pull up yeah. what you're looking at. Yeah. We'll so go back. let's go take a look at GME. And we'll we're just make go this the new, the new feature. We'll pull up the chart with you while you're doing it. And oh, yeah. Let's show them what their I'll odds are. Blinds. Oh, does that mean I get to pick the channel first then? Oh, I, look at that. <laughs> look at I'll, that. I'll, 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 you know, Darren, since Josh won last time, I and this is, you know, your wheelhouse. I, I think it's only right <laughs> if you get to tell. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. The range is absurd. The range is absolutely yeah, absurd. It's, it's crazy. I need a, I need you to lengthen or to uh, stretch out that chart top to bottom. It's All crazy. right. Hold on. Let me make it big for you. <laughs> and you still, this, you still always huge. give a channel, though. Yeah. And, and that channel okay. comes from my, my dashboard. So it's not actually right. the chart that gives that channel. It's the this top guy secret dashboard we all want right there. There Ooh, you go. Can, you can see that can now. See that? Yeah, that's I all right. That. So the the six lower or seven lower time frames are saying that basically there is support somewhere between sixteen and nineteen dollars. The closest one is right about nineteen fifty ish, and then basically there's a secondary support around sixteen dollars. Um, that basically that should be able to hold. If it breaks through that, God bless us all. Look at that dollar uh, sixty nine on that five minute chart. <laughs> <laughs> That's why this is so nuts. I don't right? think really. I'm looking we at be that doing going, yes right? for AMC it's just gonna, it's, <laughs> All uh, right, and the other side, the other side of the spectrum is basically it can get up to about fifty five, uh, not fifty five, ha, huh, twenty five, twenty five. Don't excite the dollars. Eggs. So basically, you see twenty six, twenty four, twenty five, twenty five, twenty five, twenty seven. So somewhere between $25, $26, there's a heavy resistance on this guy. Um, and so that's about a 30% move from where we are, just in case you're counting, right? Um, and if basically it breaks above that, the next distance between that 25 valuation is $44. So that's 100%, 120%. Um, yeah, if it breaks that out that far, 
we've seen that kind of movement though. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely and crazy. and you see the charts. You see the the uh, our chart said, hey, yeah, you might want to leave. This is it. So um, I guess uh, Darren, since you've been the underdog for so long. Uh, do you want to go to first to pick the range or where you want to land? No, you always pick the range and then we pick. Oh, no, I just basically highlight pick. where the charts pick the range and then oh, like where okay. pick whatever. Well, they that's want. that's a new that's a new little fold you've thrown in then. But uh, just for you, brother, just for you. Yeah. Gee, thanks. Uh, <laughs> let's make the range. Let's make the range uh, 16 to 27. Let's do that. All right, 16 to 27. Sounds good. All right, and you get to pick first, brother. And I'm going to take uh, – that means that we have a – That means it's 16 to 27? That's, that that's means how 11, yeah. it is, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know if you've looked at the options chain here. I, I, I don't – I do not look at theirs, but the option chain is absolutely crazy right now. And GMA. the beautiful thing is – the beautiful thing is if it can get above 26 – it definitely has some room to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take – so that means we have 11, and I always get the bigger of the range. So that's going to be four, three uh, – that'll be four. And you pick that range quite nicely because that's literally sitting between the mean line of our infinity band and our RSI line. So that's 1565 all the way up to 2677. That, so you pick that range quite nicely, sir. Why, thank you. <laughs> so I will one, take, where, where are you one to, to land i will take uh 20 to 20 i'm gonna make you guys pick above or below 20 to 24 20 to 24 all right daniel i'll let you go next all right so she picked 20 sorry i'm just trying to like mark it on the chart so i like I don't know. 20 to 24 darren has I'll I'll pick below that. Uh, I don't want above. <laughs> I don't want above, but that's okay. You know what? I did give you that option. So, hey, all right, you know what, Royce? Above, Royce, anything above Royce. twenty-four is mine, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna okay. take. I was gonna say I'll take the upper, but yeah. Go go ahead. Well, you you picked the middle. You said I thought. But I just, yeah, I just no, talked no, told Darren, myself. Darren, no, no, you you picked. You're locked it's in. The now. options chain. This option it's chain. it's actually it's actually <laughs> in the Rosetta Stone. You got to deal with it, <laughs> That's right? right? That's just the way it works. Sorry, it is brother. etched in history. All right, <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is what we'll roll with. We will go. We've got Daniel below twenty, me twenty twenty four, and Royce above twenty four. So. Uh, we'll see how that I'm, works like, out. I'm loving these charts. So we, we're gonna see. So now I'm going. Now all it has to do is hold support. That's all I need. Hold support, and then yeah, just get above that. So anything above. All right, twenty four and above. I need a support to hold here where it is now, and just stay in the channel that the funds love to keep it in. So <laughs> <laughs> there is that. You're not wrong. I know. <laughs> Like You're I said, wrong. next week is going to be crazy. I don't know if it'll be the first part of the week or the second part of the week, but I predict something will happen. We'll see. All right, yeah. guys. Appreciate you guys coming by again. It's good to have you back, Mr. Singapore. And yeah. uh, we will I see, see my Wi-Fi to work and we're in business. Josh East. Wi-Fi. That's right. They are fixing things. <laughs> fixing things in Singapore. <laughs> oh, I gave away your find location. You. Uh-oh. <laughs> They'll find you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Royce. And we will see you again next week after the bell.